Hi, I'm Danny Russell, Vice President at the Asia Society Policy Institute, ASPE. Thanks for joining me. I want to introduce you to a new report that I co-authored with my terrific colleague, Emily Rate, called Defense or Diffusion, Open Source AI in US-China Competition. Now, artificial intelligence is one of those subjects that become too big to ignore and almost too fast moving, even for the experts to make sense of. I think too often in the conversation, it's a dichotomous choice. Open is risky, closed is safe. Why is there this conversation? And it's much more complicated than that. There are risks and opportunities with both open source models and closed models. We're in a moment in AI where breakthroughs are landing all the time, rules are still being written, and last month's consensus is probably already out of date. Take DeepSeek, the Chinese startup that grabbed headlines. Its models performed surprisingly well, even though they were built with less advanced chips and reportedly at a fraction of the cost of, say, chat GPT-4. The details of what they actually did, how they did it, are a bit controversial, but DeepSeek definitely showed just how fast China's developers are innovating, despite U.S. constraints. DeepSeek wasn't just a technology headline, it was a moment. It was a jolt to Silicon Valley, a wake-up call to the Pentagon. And it's a big flashing red light for anyone who just assumes that U.S. dominance in AI is a sure thing. How big a deal was DeepSeek? There are two things about DeepSeek. One is that they made a good open source model, and the other is that they made a consumer app that for the first time uh, briefly surpassed ChatGPT as the most downloaded AI tool, maybe the most downloaded app overall. But the challenge isn't so much about who's ahead. It's about what kind of strategy will keep them ahead. The number one factor that will define whether the United States or China wins this race is whose technology is most broadly adopted in the rest of the world. I come at this issue from a career in foreign policy and national security. But what I've learned, sometimes the hard way, is that the winner in a high stakes competition isn't necessarily the one who invents the best thing, it's the one who uses the thing the best. Who gets it adopted, integrated, scaled into something meaningful. And that's really the core insight of this report. We started with a straightforward question. In a world of rising geopolitical tensions, does openness in AI, in other words, releasing open source models whose design or code or data is available to anybody, does that openness help or hurt U.S. strategic interests. There are two valid but contradictory arguments that can be made here. One is that we can't let China or bad actors just piggyback on U.S. innovation, so we should keep the AI models closed in order to keep them safe. The other is that openness itself is America's superpower, that we win when the world is building on our ideas, our foundations, not somebody else's. 18% of the people in the world live in China, 4% live in the United States, 78% live somewhere else. The lesson from Huawei and 5G is whoever gets there first will be difficult to supplant. So my co-author and I dug through the evidence and we tried to map the trade-offs objectively. We came away with a few key conclusions. First and foremost, that innovation alone, no matter how brilliant, isn't enough. The 2018 National Defense Strategy put it this way, success no longer goes to the country that develops a new technology first, but rather to the one that better integrates it and adapts it. And that principle applies beyond defense. If we develop superb AI tools, but we can't scale them, can't integrate them, can't get them into the hands of users, we lose out. The goal here is diffusion to drive rapid global adoption. Think about it this way. In 2006, a cell phone was a phone. By 2010, it was a computer, a computer that changed the way we lived and worked, connected and shopped. That's diffusion. And on the question of open source versus closed proprietary AI models, our conclusion was that with the right safeguards, openness can be a force multiplier, not just for US innovation, but for our broader economic and geopolitical strategy. The reason is that open source AI lowers barriers. It expands our technology ecosystem, and it helps like-minded partners build with us, not around us. Done right, 
Open source AI helps people upgrade models quickly, tailor them to local problems, and to understand what's happening under the hood. It allows startups, researchers, governments in developing countries to adapt US origin tools to their own needs while at the same time reinforcing our technical standards and values. This isn't just theoretical. We've seen it work before with open source software like Android, what you have on your phone, Linux, which runs much of the internet, or web browsers like Firefox. OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, was recently asked about the firm's past reluctance to share models and research. His answer was significant. He said the company had been, quote, on the wrong side of history when it came to open source. That's quite an admission, especially from a company that had deliberately moved away from its original open source model. For Altman to now admit that OpenAI may have been on the wrong side of history, that suggests mounting pressure and could have ripple effects across the AI landscape. For one, it validates meta strategy and puts pressure on other closed source players like Anthropic and Google DeepMind to clarify their own positions. Earlier, I made a few caveats with the right safeguards, if done right, because open source AI does carry risks. Bad actors could strip out safety features. Foreign adversaries could adapt open models for surveillance or military purposes. And if a model is trained on sensitive material, some of that data might leak or be extracted. But openness doesn't have to mean vulnerability. These are risks we can manage. That's why the report recommends an approach that keeps foundational models open enough to support innovation, but puts real controls on the highest risk tools. Obviously, military or surveillance or cyber applications should be subject to licensing, monitoring, and maybe export restrictions. That means building the infrastructure to support responsible openness. That could include things like secure repositories, watermarking and traceability, red team testing to catch problems early. Again, being open doesn't have to mean being vulnerable or operating without guardrails. Another important takeaway is the need to keep reinforcing our technology alliances. If we work closely with partners like Japan, South Korea, the UK, India, we can help shape open AI ecosystems. Working with partners, we can make AI systems secure, interoperable, and keep them grounded in democratic values. The flip side is the price we would pay for walling off our technology. Remember what I said about diffusion, the first principle. If US systems aren't out in the world being adopted, being adapted, being used, then we're leaving the field wide open to others and others are already filling it. Beijing has been actively exporting AI tools through its digital Silk Road, especially to developing countries. Many of those models are open source and easy to access and integrate but they reflect values that are very different than our own. So the risk here is that we seed influence, seed control, and end up with global AI systems that are aligned with authoritarian interests. My last point is that ultimately, no amount of safeguards or diffusions are gonna matter if we undermine our own national strengths. Funding for public research, support for university labs, investment in the computing power that AI depends on. These aren't luxuries. These are the foundations of our leadership. If we slash science budgets or push away foreign talent, we won't just be outcompeted, we'll be obsolete. The bottom line is that leadership in AI isn't gonna come from hoarding our technologies it's gonna come from things like setting standards, fostering innovation, and making it easy for US developed tools to be used around the world. So if we wanna say in how AI shapes the future, we need to maintain the lead in building and in disseminating it. So please check out the Defense or Diffusion Report on the Asia Society Policy Institute website. And thanks for watching.